Apple's new M5 chip brings surprisingly strong performance gains compared to just last year's M4 chip, and this time around, Apple is pretty clearly marketing the M5 chip at their own Apple Silicon customers, saying, with game-changing improvements over Intel-based and M1 models, there's never been a better time to upgrade or switch to a 14-inch MacBook Pro. So it looks like with the fifth generation of Apple Silicon devices, Apple is turning up the heat a little bit more explicitly on getting M1 users to upgrade. But with new MacBook Pro models slated to come out next year, including new OLED displays and a redesign, is now the best time to be buying. Well, today, let's dive into everything that's new with the M5 chip. Apple has claimed some pretty remarkable performance here, so I want to give you guys a deep dive into the chip itself and the products they announced, because there are some, let's say, questionable decisions made. One of them being that the new Apple Vision Pro with the M5 chip does not offer a trade-in program for people that bought the M2 Vision Pro just a year and a half ago. And that's kind of a spit in the face to customers that paid $3,500 for a device with an M2 chip. But sadly, you're out of luck. If you bought a Vision Pro, you gotta sell it on your own or just buy the new one outright. That was a really weird decision. But let's dive into everything because the first thing that you'll notice is that the M5 chip today came out on the iPad Pro, the MacBook Pro, and the Vision Pro. So what this to me indicates is that they're setting this chip up to be effectively the next broad application chip. The last time we saw this was the M2, because the M2 chip stuck around in the MacBook Air for years after it was current. It was used in the Vision Pro, it was used in iPad Airs. So you can see that every couple of generations, Apple introduces an M chip that gets used well beyond the typically one year cycle of it being current, and it looks like the M5 chip is going to be that. But man, let me tell you, these stats that Apple is claiming for this chip are pretty bananas. Let me just run you through everything that Apple claimed in their various press releases. You ready? Four times the AI GPU compute versus the M4 chip. 45% higher GPU performance in ray traced apps compared to M4. Up to 15% faster CPU. 30% faster memory bandwidth at 153 gigabytes per second versus 120 on M4. 1.6 times faster graphics in pro apps. 1.6 times the frame rate in games. 20% faster CPU in the MacBook Pro compared to the M4. 7.7 times the performance in Topaz versus M1 and 1.8 versus M4. 6.8 times Blender performance versus M1 and 1.7x versus M4. 3.2 times faster FPS versus M1 and 1.6 times faster than M4, 2.1 times faster build time compiling code in Xcode versus M1 and 1.2 times versus M4. Those are some extremely bold and also slightly mismatched statistics versus just one previous chip. And keep in mind, the M4 was a pretty big jump. So for Apple to be claiming 1.6 times faster frame rates in games versus the M4 chip, that's pretty nuts. What the heck? And this really ties into a video I made less than a month ago in the A17 Pro chip where I basically said that Apple has exceeded all of my expectations when it comes to Apple Silicon. When the M1 chip came out, it was so much faster than all of the Intel Macs that came before it that I kind of was worried that Apple was gonna struggle to keep iterating, but they have absolutely not done that. The M3 generation introduced ray tracing. The M4 brought massive improvements in CPU and in GPU. And now once again, we have apparently 45% faster GPU in ray traced applications compared to what was already better than the M3, which was way better than the M2. It's just crazy. So let's bring some of these performance claims to life with some hypothetical benchmarks. And we're gonna use the M5 MacBook Pro's press release where they claim 20% faster CPU. So if we pull up my Cinebench 2024 numbers, that means it's absolutely clobbering the M1 Pro and it's even beating out the M3 Pro. Now, of course, the M4 Pro and the last two Max chips are going to be still significantly faster, but you can see that the M5 is getting closer and closer to those performance numbers. I mean, just look at how much faster it is compared to M2. It's more than double the performance. 
but the GPU gains are apparently even bigger. They're claiming 1.7 times faster performance in Blender. That means about 35 seconds compared to a minute in the Blender Classroom GPU render. Look at how much faster that is than the M2. That is actually freaking crazy. If we pull in some Pro and Max chips, you can see the M5 is theoretically beating the M3 Pro chip despite having way fewer cores in the CPU and the GPU. In gaming, they're claiming 1.6 times higher FPS compared to M4. That would put it at 45 in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which would once again be pretty noticeably faster than the M3 Pro, and honestly getting very close to the M4 Pro here. So this new GPU is an absolute screamer. And imagine what happens when you combine all of this and scale it up on the future M5 Pro and Max and maybe even Ultra chips. This generation is starting to look pretty nuts. And that's especially surprising considering that last year I said, this generation is starting to look pretty nuts. And I thought, frankly, that Apple was going to hold back on the M5 because of how big the M4 was. But they're not resting at all. Whatever they're feeding to that Apple Silicon team, I want some, because clearly it works. But what makes this day of announcements really interesting is that while this chip seems like a monster and I can't wait to get my hands on it and review it, the products that it's going in might be a bit of a tougher sell. Let's start with the iPad Pro. Now, last year, Apple redesigned the iPad Pro for the M4 chip, and to be honest, I really like that design. Do you need the performance of the M4 chip? No but it does look really nice and it's, it's just fantastic to use with OLED displays, great new design. Now with this new M5 version, yes, you're gonna get more performance. Apple claims the new iPad Pro has 3.5 times the AI performance of the M4 iPad Pro. It also now gains the N1 wireless networking chip and the C1X modem, giving it 50% faster cellular data performance than the last model. They're also claiming you get up to two times faster storage read and write speeds, and all the 256 and 512 gigabyte models now start with 12 gigabytes of unified memory instead of eight. Definitely some nice internal upgrades and about what we would expect for the first update to a new generation of iPad Pro, if you will. I don't think it changes the equation a lot, which let's be honest, is kind of how the iPad Pro has been for the past seven years. Let me know in the comments below if you find these internal performance upgrades actually useful? Is this something that you would consider as reason to upgrade? Or is it just kind of like cherry on top stuff? Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe because I'm gonna be reviewing all of these new things, except for maybe the Vision Pro. I'm not really sold on that. In fact, speaking of Vision Pro, I don't think that many of us expected a Vision Pro spec bump to be in the cards. Because when the M2 version came out almost two years ago now, we kind of thought, okay, it'll be a couple of years and then we'll get Vision Pro 2, which will have some big updates. But instead we got a somewhat incremental version with the new M5 chip, but it does offer some hopefully tangible benefits. Apple is claiming the M5 chip renders 10% more pixels compared to the last generation. And it also allows Vision Pro to increase the refresh rate up to 120 hertz to reduce motion blur when you look at the physical surroundings. They're also claiming that AI powered features are 50% faster for system experiences like making a persona or transforming photos into spatial scenes and twice as fast in third party apps compared to the M2. So the M5 chip might just be a spec bump, but it does appear to be actually improving the experience. And specifically, if we parse what Apple is saying there, they're claiming that the pass-through cameras are going to be better, less motion blur, and slightly sharper pixels. Is that going to completely change one of the biggest complaints with Vision Pro, which was that the, the pass-through cameras frankly don't look that great? I don't think it's gonna completely change it, but it is a step in the right direction. So too is the new dual knit band, which should be a lot more comfortable offering back and top of head support. I think these are all great upgrades, but it does make me wonder, why would I buy that? And given that they're not offering any trade-in on the existing Vision Pro, there's no way that I'm gonna roll the dice on trying to sell my Vision Pro on eBay and then buy a new $3,500 one for those microscopic upgrades. So I don't really know exactly who this is for, I don't think it's gonna convince people that didn't buy the M2 one that now they should buy it. If anything, it kind of makes me think, well, hey, 
I guess Vision Pro isn't a dead product, so I'm gonna wait for when they actually change the physical product itself. And some of that hesitancy does carry over to the new MacBook Pro. We get a new feature this year on the base model, which is the option of a nano texture display. That's 150 bucks. And other than that, it's all the same features from last year. So with a new generation coming out soon, uh, ugh, it's, a, it's a little bit of an interesting time to be buying. Now I will say, Apple tends to delay the update to their base model. So if I had to hazard a guess, Next year, when we get a new redesigned MacBook Pro, I would imagine the base model, this M5, is gonna keep this design for at least one or two more years. Now, another detail that I think is gonna make a very big difference going forward is that Apple has some new storage technology and they're now claiming 2X faster SSD performance, like on the iPad Pro. So that means that going forward, we're gonna see a massive jump across the board in SSD read write speeds, which are already very fast, so I can't wait to test that out. So overall, this new MacBook Pro generation seems like a massive, massive internal update. And pretty much what's happening is every year now, as these base chips get faster and faster and faster, there's less and less reason to go for the Pro and the Max chips. As we've seen from the hypothetical benchmarks earlier, the M5 chip looks like it's gonna be faster in every single way than the M3 Pro, which is just two generations old. Put another way, I don't think people's workflows are getting this much more demanding year over year. So if two years ago, you were looking at the M3 versus the M3 Pro and going, oh, do I need to spend the extra money? And then you decided not to, well, now you really don't need to make that decision because the M5 is that powerful. So I'm obviously super stoked to get my hands on these new chips. Make sure to get subscribed because we're gonna go over the SSD speed, the real life performance, battery life, all of that stuff, just in about a week time here on the channel. Get subscribed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on all of Apple's new releases in the comments down below, and I'll catch you in the next one.